You are on mute. Mute, hi. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Anthony, you knew where our discussions were, too. You could have jumped in. You're a host of another show. I'm all sorry. Right. I, I'm a <laughs> all good, job. all good. <laughs> you know, you would think after two years of doing this and the fact that I run other virtual meetings, all the time um but anyways here we are okay so the first things first as we know um the Colts fired frank reich after four and a half seasons and hired his interim coach jeff saturday and there's a lot of discussion about mr jeff saturday but let's just talk about um coach reich first just because you know it's good to kind of have some ideas so um, let's go to you, Tina, as our guest co-host. What do you think about the firing of Reich and his replacement, Mr. Jeff Saturday? And everybody out there watching, please, by all means, share your comments. What are your thoughts on the firing of Reich? And also um, his interim replacement, Mr. Jeff Saturday. Um, here's my thought is it's four and a half years. Does it really make a difference if you let the guy have another half year on his coaching contract and let him finish it out, see what he could do with the team and everything like, because I don't understand the Jeff Saturday uh, bringing him in. He has no coaching experience. He's simply an ex player that people like, and it just, it doesn't make sense to me. So maybe somebody, you guys or somebody on the chat can make it make sense to me. So that's my thought on it. All right, Mr. Anthony Handy, what do you think? Well, if you got a guy that was able to, um, you, you got a guy that was able to, to muster out roughly about an average of eight to nine wins a season, which is not world beater status. But it's still good, it's still good enough to at least every other year. I mean, two out of his two, three out of his four and a half years, he had at least nine wins or better. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, not good enough to win the conference, but good enough to make them relevant. And it always seemed like they were just a piece here or a piece there away from from getting where they needed to be. Uh, but of course, you know, you got the you got the Texans and King Henry. Um, you know, with their with their coach Vrabel down there, but still, you got a guy that's you you got a guy that's a, you got a guy that's not a bad football coach. I mean, but for a decision here and there, there's a couple of those years they could have been in the playoffs. And to follow on to, to agree with Tina, I mean, you know, <laughs> you could at least <laughs> well, well, you know what, Tina, I, I take that back. Let me go ahead and say this with. Every year we know the coach of carousel starts at some point. It might start during, it might start early, it might start late. Um, this might have been a calculated move on the point uh, on the part of the owners to kind of get ahead of the coaching carousel. So if there is a viable candidate out there in terms of an assistant for another team or a maybe a college coach they want to start wooing, then they can at least bring in an interim coach and get somebody else and and get the person they want in there. So that's my logic behind that. That's that's really all I have on that. And now here, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say I generally agree with your point, but the problem is, is they really can't woo these guys yet, because if they start talking to them, they can violate the clause that says you can't talk to these coaches exactly. until a certain point. So what's the point of firing the guy so early so you can sit there and wait for six months? Yeah. Now what? Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe here's it was what's calculated. here's what's interesting <laughs> though. Sorry. See, the thing that they're saying, too, though, and this just happened like a few minutes ago, is they did hire Jeff Saturday, but the person that's going to be making the play calls is the assistant, Parks Frazier. So, okay, so why not bump him up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, again, again, like, it does <laughs> beg the question of why is Urse doing this? Urse, Urse, Urse. Yeah. Or, yeah. Why? What well, made him but, you know, <laughs> because basically, even though he made the interim head coach Jeff Saturday, um, the past game specialist, right, and quarterbacks coach, coach, uh, you know, Parks Frazier, he's gonna be the offensive play caller starting this Sunday against the Raiders. So that's why I think people have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's exactly. So, so that it's like, what is going on? Like, it's really weird. I so think that's why. Basically, is he basically just like playing street football? It's like, okay, we're going to fire him. We're going to make him the interim coach. Oh, good. I get to call the plays. Nah, the janitor's going to call the plays. Well, he's not even on the sideline. Well, he's going to call into a radio to the quarterback's coach. Well, why don't you let the quarterback coach call the plays? Well, no, nah, he don't have a degree, but the guy that has a janitor degree has a degree. So we don't have him do it. Exactly. Like, it's, it's like, what are you, the, the dude? What are you doing? It makes no sense. You know that even NFL executives outside are also baffled by this hiring. Like they don't understand. Um, I know that he was a popular player. I get it, and a lot of people loved him as a player, but he never coached like at all, like whatsoever. Not high school coach. You know what I mean? Like nothing at all in coaching and then you learn that he's not even to be making calls right that they're gonna <laughs> that the office of play calls starting sunday is gonna be the assistant and it's like i don't know i kind of agree with sean like is he just out there to compete with dan snyder like and who could be the most ridiculous because we also know that he was the only one who actually like in the public, right? Now I'm not saying others didn't in public like call out Dan and like tweet stuff out, right? We saw him talk to the media. So he was like the only one. And so it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I I I got nothing. Or maybe yeah, maybe they're just making a case for I'm gonna get to that comment in a minute. I want to talk about that, but uh <laughs> but uh I mean maybe they're just making a case for we're gonna we're gonna hire somebody that's really bad so we can get a better draft pick. We're gonna put a we're gonna make it look like let's think about it though. We're gonna make it look like we made a legitimate effort to give the Colts the best chance to win. Oh wow, it didn't work out great. We get draft picks. But Sean uh Spencer, if you don't stop that foolishness, that man <laughs> that man couldn't even coach the third best team in the SEC West. You talk about hiring a coach the Colts. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So what do we think, everybody out there watching Roundtable? Like, is this just some publicity stunt? Is this just a weird thing? You know what I mean? Like, can we honestly believe that this is going to be the permanent head coach? You know what I mean? After the season, you know, going into the new season. Oh, uh, you know, know, it's just, uh, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, what was the point of this? So, of course, everybody's talking about it, by the way. So, at least it did keep people talking. I give him that. It, it did, definitely created a lot of, like, publicity for his team, for himself, you know, well, on making this decision. Gonna, they're definitely going to have some high ratings this weekend because people are going to be watching just to see. It, if only for the first half, it's going to be some high ratings. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he he probably could run a practice, of course. But like, is that like you know what I mean? One hundred percent there to keep the team together, to keep it going, and be someone that keeps the team going, but also still is bringing in the fans because <laughs> him and Peyton Manning, when they were there, they were the center of that team. So I get that. It's still just I hate to say it. It smacks <laughs> to me. It smacks of an Ursay publicity stunt. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it's, I'm it, telling you, it's the he's 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 legally tanking is what yeah. he's doing. Now, what if 100 percent would agree? What if, that. like, let's just call his bluff and let's say they actually starting Sunday make a run for it and all of a start winning games, just to because football's weird, right? So like. <laughs> what happens, you know what I mean, with this assistant making play calls and then, like, you know, like Bobby was saying, like, he's a cheerleader in their locker room helping them run plays, maybe uplifts the team, right? Maybe things outside the box. I don't know. So what if all of a sudden, starting on Sunday, they beat the Raiders and then they go on to, like, win a bunch of games? Then kind of um, what? Does this experiment work? I'm going to say, I'm going to add another what if. What if I send somebody <laughs> over there to check what's in that cup you're drinking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see a lot of weird stuff happen in football. That's all I'm saying. That's all. You know. But if and anyway. Happens, that, that would be something. Though, would has be. a magic crystal ball. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's all. I mean, but it, would, it would be funny. That's all. But uh, yeah, so that was kind of the first topic of the coin toss conversation. Now we're going to go into kind of what's been going on, which is the shocker of teams that we thought were going to be bad. They're actually good this year. And then teams, you know, 
that are banned that we thought were actually be good. So um, all of you can talk about your, your teams, if they are on the bad side and we're supposed to be good or vice versa, what do you think can be done? What are some adjustments, right? Like uh, how is the AFC looking? You know, that top four or five um, in the AFC and also in the NFC and kind of what are, what are our thoughts on kind of the way uh, the NFL has turned out this season? There are some shockers. Um, I have to say, even though I wasn't like as a Georgia fan, I'm going to go ahead and, and break the seal on the Falcons as a, as a Georgia sports fan, I don't ever expect much out of any of any of the squads. I mean, even God bless them. You know, I love my dogs. If you couldn't tell, um, I wasn't expecting them to come back and be as dominant this year as they were. And they are, but as a, as a, with the, where the Falcons are concerned, I wasn't expecting anything out of them this season. I was not expecting between, uh, you know, with with Coach Smith and the the injuries and and Calvin Ridley uh, uh, playing, uh, getting caught playing FanDuel, like th- th- this whole scenario just smacked of the Falcons maybe winning three games this season. Right. And even though they're not beating the world. And yes, I know that the records in the NFC South right now are absolutely atrocious. Just the fact that they are in the fight to even win the division, to me, is something. The fact that they're fighting every game, they're not just rolling over and playing dead in the third quarter because they're behind, it it, it says something to me. Um, I mean, even it took up to the last minute, I think it was the last minute field goal that won won the game this past Sunday. But the Falcons were in that game the entire game. So that speaks volumes to me. Um, that's that's one of my teams. I got another one. I'm gonna let everybody else go around, and if anybody jumps on the other one, I got out. Gladly add my two cents to that as well. Sure, uh, Tina. I know you want um, to talk about the AFC a little bit. Surprise, good for me is the AFC East, specifically the Dolphins. They've always had a pretty good team that's always kind of been there. And they've always been a favorite of mine because they take at least one game from the Patriots every year. And I, as people that know me, know that I love seeing Tom Brady throw a hissy fit on the football field. So (laughs) that's why I kind of like them. But this year, they've got a good team. Tua is doing well. I think they got a solid team and they're making a run for it. The question is going to be, is is Josh Allen being out for the Bills for a couple of games going to affect those standings and see what's going to happen? So that's my surprise good. And then there's also the Seahawks. They're also a very surprise good, too. So they've won four games in a row. I mean, and that yeah. – the the flip side of that will be discussed later. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Mr. Bobby Willis is our resident Miami Dolphins fan, which is why he's like always pretty good. <laughs> They've always been just there. They've been able to get games away from AFC East people like the Patriots or like some of the other teams. They win games they're not normally supposed to be able to win. That's why I'm yeah. saying like they're in the pretty good for me is like right there. And if they got a good quarterback or they got a good coach or they got this, they could make the jump. So well, that's well, here, what I'm here, here's what I got on the Dolphins. That was the other team I was going to talk about is the fact that in the span of one season, they went from the 26th ranked 26th ranked offense in the NFL. They are now the number six offensive squad in the NFL in yeah. one season. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're exciting to watch. People are actually tuning in to watch other than Bobby are actually tuning in and watching the game. Sorry, Bobby, not trying to dog your team. <laughs> they hadn't been a whole lot to holler about in Miami since Dan Marino, but you know, they're, they're still doing the dog. They're doing a the doggone thing. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I find myself every week going, how did Miami do? Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. I think, I think it's true. Like I think, honestly, I kind of agree with Ben. I think uh, for me, the interesting team is the Seahawks. You know, and also, you know, Tina also talked about briefly about the Seahawks. I think that everybody thought, and I, you know, I was with the other analysts, like, oh, there go the Seahawks, right? Like, they're they're done. Oh, their starter is Gino. Now, I always like Gino. I've talked about on different shows. Like, I I always rooted for this guy because he always just popped up as backup for so many different teams, you know. And I was like, hey, he's got his shot. So I was actually excited for him to start and get his opportunity to actually be legitimately. You know, not just come in because someone went down, got injured. You know what I mean? But legitimate chance 
at that QB one, and he's doing a hell of a job, guys. Like he really is doing a bang up job, you know. And so, um, so I kind of feel like, yeah, like Seahawks were like for me a surprising um, top team. Like yeah. I, I don't think people really realize that they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be the one that's gonna challenge the, you know, the Niners in that division, in my opinion. But- but did we did we or did we not say whether it was on this show or as a guest on another show somewhere did we not say that Geno Smith that it it, it was good to see that Geno was getting that second chance yes. to go out and ball out one hundred percent. You never I said you never can tell. It's just like uh it's just like uh the the intro to lose yourself. You get one shot and one opportunity. Sees everything you have you know when you captured it when you let it slip, and he's out there doing the doggone thing. He's balling. He's balling like a man ten ten years younger. I mean, he don't he don't run quite as fast as he used to, but he's still out there balling. <laughs> he's, but he's getting it done. So the yep. speed. Ma- now here's the other shocker. So I don't know if you know, but the in the AFL right now, the New York Jets are fourth. Okay, so I want us to think about that. That in the in the AFL, the New York Jets are fourth right now currently meaning that if we were to go into the playoffs tomorrow right or next week they would be playoff bounds what do we think about the jets being fourth and actually having a pretty pretty good run this season so far um i'm i'm thinking it's absolutely awesome uh do you say afl i'm i'm like afl yes but, sorry, the, the I'm, going back, I'm going back. Like, to the, is it 1965? I'm going back to the pre-merger. <laughs> I apologize. I've been doing a deep diving into a lot of history. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I, the, 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 the Jets are the Jets sorry. are killing it. I mean, look at all they've gone through in the last 10, 15 years with Sanchez and the butt fumble and uh, Fireman Jake or Joe or whatever his name is. Their number one, their number one diehard fan said. I'm out. I'm going to go do subway commercials and uh, the scandals with Rex Ryan and his wife and the pictures of the videos of him. And uh, I'm not even going to get it. He had a thing with her feet or something like that. And they made a whole bunch of fun about that. Like all of the stuff that they've been through. And at the start of the season, everybody's like, well, the jets are here. We'll see what they do. Yeah. And, and those boys are ball dead defense is stupid. That's really what's talking keeping about running. that defense. Yeah, though. Sauce Gardner, baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, it, it's partly spilt milk, but it's Go been it. shown through a lot of pictures. Sauce is getting away with a lot of DPI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was about to take a drink of us. <laughs> I had to grab a trash can to spit. Uh, well, he's gotten away with a hell of a lot of DPI that he's not getting called for. So, well, let's, yes, let's, let's he's see. good. He's but a they, very good corner for a for a rookie. But they all he, do though. Yeah, and here's the other point: the Jets only <laughs> beat the Broncos by a touchdown, maybe it, maybe ten points, something like that. So they, I think, like the Patriots, what's going on in the NFC, AFC East is <laughs> some of these teams are playing teams that aren't as good, so they kind of pad their schedule a little bit. I'm not taking away from what the Jets have done. Yeah. Zach Wilson is doing a good job there. He still needs some season. There's some good things going on at the Jets, but it, it, maybe further down the line, it might not be the same. So... I don't know. They did. They did beat the Bills. Yeah. I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying they beat the Bills, it's but just, then they barely beat the Broncos. Yeah. They I mean, smacked it's not, it's not, I it's mean, not, it's but, not going to be magic every week, though. No. And honestly, like they're like, remember the the Chiefs lost to the Colts, right? And so, like, yeah. so sometimes weird stuff happens. But I agree. Who knows? Do they fall out or do they continue? Right? Because we're still the football season is so long, guys. Like, <laughs> there's still so much left. It's crazy. So, uh, you know, it is possible they fall out or they continue to grow. <laughs> also, on the opposite end, the other New York team is also fourth, which is really crazy. So the Giants are also having a good record. So both New York teams, so the city, who's usually divided, and the state, 
um, between you know, specific city uh, between two teams. Like both teams are doing pretty good. Like it's it's kind of wild because everybody always forgets that Buffalo is also in the state of New York, right. but no one ever. <laughs> So, but we're talking they're, about like we're talking about like New York City, you know. They're, you know, they're half Canadian. They're, they're half Canadian by proximity. <laughs> <laughs> that's not wait a minute. That's not a bad thing. I'm just saying they're half Canadian by proximity. That's all. Well, then I should say I'm half Canadian because I was born up in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Literally oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what is? How, how about everybody in the comments? What are the teams like that you guys are honestly surprised how well they're doing? And where are the teams you're surprised about how bad they're doing? Um, for me, it's still going to be the Raiders. The Raiders are super disappointing. I know they won a game finally. But honestly, to me, that is the biggest, like, letdown are the Raiders. And I, and even the Packers. I want to be honest with you, too. Like, in my division, I, I never thought. Now, I didn't think they were going to win. I kind of always gave the edge to the Vikings. But I didn't think it would be this bad. I'm going to be honest. I've been watching Illo. I grew up a Bears fan. I, I grew up watching them beat us up every division, every season, except one or twice. Like one time we went to the Super Bowl with Lovey. That, you know, so like, but, it, you know, um, but honestly, those are the two big ones. And it's almost like they switched karma when they sent Devontae. <laughs> Like, I feel like they, like, jinxed each other. Like, I don't know, but he's the key, guys. Think about it. The Vontae Adams was traded to the Raiders. And all of a sudden, the Packers started to just just flay all over the place. And then even with the Raiders, they still can't win even with the, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL in the last, I don't know, decade. You know what I mean? Always top two, right? We know that. He always, always ended up, like, either first or close first. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't even really call him second. Like, it was almost like a tie. You know what I mean? So those, for me, are, are the shockers, honestly. For me, the Packers and the Raiders. And I say that as someone that's a Bears fan in that division. What do y'all think? So are you are you telling me that moving Devontae Adams out to Las Vegas was kind of like in uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom where they took the sacred stones and the village dried up? Is that... Is that what you're telling me? I think so. I mean, but, but that's about what it sounds like. But he also took the curse with him to the other team. Right. Oh, no, yeah. no. That's not Devontae. That's Josh McDaniels is the curse. Ooh, all right. <laughs> let's go. And as far as, the, as far as the Packers are concerned, I have to agree with you. I mean, I, I, I felt like the Packers would do for a come down at some point, but I didn't realize it was going to be like that. Like that, like that. Like the Packers are starting to play as haggard as Aaron Rodgers has looked for the last two or three years. And that's not even me being funny. That's just me telling the truth. I'm like, wow, Packers, really? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, because, I mean, I don't like to give Aaron a lot of credit because he can be whiny and other things. And I'll be one one thing I will say, I'm very glad we did not end up with him in a trade now. But he kept saying, I don't have any weapons. All he had was Devontae. That's it. You get rid of his weapons, and that's the, and you send him off, and you don't replace him. It's yeah, it's the, not a good system. I don't know what's going on there. So but there's there's other teams that are winning with rookie receivers. So I'm not seeing what the problem is. I'm yeah. I wonder I wonder what the common denominator in that equation is. <laughs> Aaron uh. Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, it's an interesting conversation to to honestly have because it's just you know I, the other thing is that. Um, they're notorious for not doing well in trades. Like they're very, they like they're the very, frug they're very frugal. Um, you know, and so that's one of the reasons Devante left. They couldn't pay Devante and Aaron Rodgers the same. You know, at the same time, it was just too much money between both. But well, that's a lie. Just like the cap, they could have, but they didn't want. To. <laughs> I'm just saying, exactly. but it's just it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. It's it's an interesting situation there. Um, but um, Minnesota is the number two team in the league. Okay, guys. Yeah. Minnesota has so many wins right now that they're second in the league behind the Eagles. Like, it's what is that, guys? Like, I knew they were going to be good, but I didn't think they would be like this. It, it's amazing what winning will do for your persona. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I remember everybody. I remember, you know, especially the, the OG Godfather, Sean. Loving, I didn't know him back then, but I'm sure he was loving Mr. Mr. Clean Cut, Mr. Clean Cut, Minnesota, St. Olive Boy going, you like that on television? 
but they've been winning some games now. He's on. Did you see him dancing in the plane with his shirt off, looking like yes. Marky, looking like yes. Marky Mark in the Good Vibrations video? Everybody <laughs> has seen that. Everybody, honestly, like everybody has seen that video. One, I never knew this. I, I if anybody's learned anything about uh, Kirk, you must know that he is like a. <laughs> A quiet Christian man. That's what he comes across as. He has a various Christian foundations. So imagine this. Come, you know what I mean? It's such a different side. Honestly, for me, unexpected. Uh, and honestly, I think that makes it, for me in my book, I think that's kind of cool because I always thought he was a bit of a stiff neck. You know what I mean? Like way too, too proper. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I kind of like that he broke loose and like was uh -huh. dancing and had to go chains and showing off his six pack because I was not expecting that either because like I said, he's always properly dressed right and so all the memes have come out of you know how he's usually wearing little button-up shirts like you know about this is the guy that'll bring him here this is the, ah! you know what i mean this a wait a wait a minute wait a minute though you're not just gonna blow by the fact that you acknowledge that the man has yes. six pack showing I, off the six pack he was, you know? i wasn't expecting that sir i was like okay <laughs> Like, okay, look, 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 let, me, this find, let me find out that Lila was at home. Like, okay, I see you, Magic Mike. Okay, yeah, cross <laughs> meeting me on the plane. <laughs> oh my god, they're killing that is Kirk. so they're, true. They're, man. they're, killing, they're, they're <laughs> killing Kirk, they're killing Kirk in the in two chains. And Bobby <laughs> said he looked like Rick Raff. Yes, <laughs> Look like Riffraff. Nah, he looked more, he, he look more like B Rap from Malibu's Most Wanted. Don't be high in. <laughs> look like an eight pack. Whoa, Sean, you were really check. I, <laughs> I didn't realize it was an eight pack. <laughs> oh, it's because Cat was staring at the video, so he was able to observe a little bit more. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, Kirk, you have fun. Y'all are, you know, y'all winning. I get it. You're kicking, you know, you're kicking a lot of butt. You guys came in and won after your uh, your bye week, so I understand. Keep having fun, man. Seriously, I, I like having, I like seeing guys have an honestly good time. You know what I mean? It's just funny. It builds that camaraderie. Understand why his guys rally behind him because his players have always defended Kirk all the time. Like even when they had like not the best seasons, no one ever came out and said, "Oh, you got to replace, you know, our quarterback or anything like that." So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's get off of football for a second. Let me address this right here. Let me ask this question to all the ladies in, <laughs> ladies in the audience that are oh watching God, this video so right funny. now, whether I'm you dying. watch it live or whether you watch the replay. Why do y'all do that? Like, we can't, if a woman walked by and she's got on a dress that's so tight, this blah, 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 right? And now my now my wife and I, we 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 are good. Okay. We good. But like I've seen dudes like if a woman walk by and his eyes move just that much, he's like <laughs> blah, 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 and, and all of that. But like a woman will be like, baby, 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 look at that, look at that, look at that. You see that right there? Oh my god, baby, look at that. Ooh, oh, okay, I'll see you, Mr. Olivia. <laughs> okay, I'll see you, six pack. <laughs> I see you, Magic Mike. I see you. You was in the genuine video in the bag. Ride it, my <laughs> pony. Why do y'all do that? Well, to be fair, I actually do that with any like uh when Ciara comes out, I always like I always point out the fact how gorgeous she is and that Russell Wilson is a very lucky man. I always <laughs> say you see she gave us one you see she gave us that was gorgeous. One, she, she gave us one example. I have many. I, I have I, many. I, I, It'll I, take I, up the whole show. I, trust me. Okay. Tina, you know, women don't have any problem finding other women attractive or men. Like, it's, it, it's usually guys that don't like to point out that the guys are attractive. Well, I, don't, listen, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem. I don't have a, like, I might not say it out loud, but I could see a dude and be like, okay, that's a handsome dude. Right, like, right, I, right, right. I get why the ladies were crazy about Denzel back in the day with that smile in <laughs> <laughs> her. He still looks good. Got, like, I get, like, I, I get, I get that. You know what I mean? But I'm saying, like, the, the yeah. point that I, I'm getting Andy, at is I if, think you are right. There are a lot of women that do that. They don't want their yeah. guy looking at a girl. Boom. That's and, what I'm girl, about. Look, my personal philosophy has always been looking ain't touching. I agree. I'm the same way. Right. So but, uh, I'm I understand if the guy is yeah. checking out a good looking girl. Now yeah. I might be in the minority. <laughs> You're not. I don't care. Me. That's, I don't care. I'm not gonna get mad because he's looking at someone. <laughs> me neither. You can't ask Kevin. <laughs> there's a lot of women out there that would. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> I get it. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So this was this uh, this was fun. It went off the rails a little bit, but I like that. It's a good show. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.